Hello and welcome back to another Giant Slayer TFT Synergies tier list video. Today our analysts will be ranking each synergy from S all the way down to C tier for patch 1112. We'll be breaking down each tier of synergies and delving into what makes those traits useful in the current meta. All of the synergies are useful in the right situation as the meta is actually quite varied. We've got a lot to cover so let's go ahead and start it off. But before we begin, please don't forget to click the links in our description. Give your support to everyone who helped make this video happen. We host many TFT tournaments with plenty of exciting content to come. Be sure to also follow our Giant Slayer TFT social media pages. All right, let's get back to the video. Starting off our tier list, we have the synergies in the S tier, which consists of Nightbringer, Dawnbringer, Legionnaire, and Mystic. These synergies are flexible and commonly used in mid to late game compositions. At the top of S tier, we have Nightbringer, which has a lot of solid champions to choose from. But by far the best champion that Nightbringer has is Yasuo. Yasuo has become the best overall carry in the current patch because he does a lot of damage, and some of it is true damage. This means he doesn't care about the critical damage nerf or whether a player is running a hard to kill frontline. Nightbringer also helps keep him alive longer in a fight, as well as boosting his damage. Of course, Yasuo isn't the only reason for Nightbringers doing well, as there's also Aphelios, Diana, Darius, Morgana, and Lee Sin that are worth talking about. At the end of the day, the trait provides a lot of survivability with valuable champions. Next is another flexible trait built around survivability, Dawnbringer. Dawnbringer is a bit less flexible in terms of the amount of useful champions, but it has one of the best four cost carries in the meta, Karma. Riven is also doing well as a carry, though not nearly as well as she was in the last patch. And of course, there's Garen, a staple late game champion for any AP comp. As we said, Dawnbringer is all about survivability as the healing effect of the trait is relevant the entire game. It's especially useful in the early game with Gragas and Kha'Zix being a formidable pair. Overall, Dawnbringer has a lot of value throughout each stage of the game, making them a versatile trait. Another Yasuo trait is next with Legionnaire. Besides Yasuo, there's also Draven and Mordekaiser, both of which are common champions in the current meta. Legionnaire is mainly a supplemental trait for those champions and not the star of the show. That's because the value of 2 and 4 Legionnaire is somewhat comparable, so you never really need to commit to more than that. That said, having increased attack speed and a heal is what makes the trait worth playing with carries like Yasuo and Draven. And lastly for the S tier, we have Mystic. With the AP compositions being much more common this patch, we've seen a huge increase in the amount of Mystic being used. Plus, the champions are really good, particularly Rise and Kindred, but don't sleep on Lux, Morgana, or Lulu, as all of them are useful. Let's move on to the A tier. This tier consists of Forgotten, Invoker, Revenant, Cavalier, Ranger, Eternal, Brawler, Dragon Slayer, Caretaker, and Cruel. These are synergies that do well in the mid and late game and are often part of endgame comps. Up first is Forgotten. Forgotten has gone up a bit in value thanks to the early game power spikes you can hit during stage 3, but also having solid mid-game champions like Katarina, Rise, Draven, and Hecarim. Forgotten also benefits the most from Shadow items, particularly Shadow Locket, to help with their relatively weak frontline and Shadow Blue buff, which is amazing on Rise. Trait may struggle into the late game, but given how strong it can be during stage 3, 4, and some of 5, it's definitely worth considering in the current meta. Next, we have Invoker. Invoker is a common splash trait mostly due to Ivern and Karma. Ivern is in a lot of endgame compositions and Karma, being a strong carry, is often used as well. Increased mana gain is useful on practically every champion, meaning Invoker always has value. Speaking of Ivern, let's talk about Revenant. Despite the nerfs that Volibear, Ivern, and Revenant have received throughout set 5, they are still some of the most common late game frontliners. Ivern in particular is used in a lot of compositions. Nocturne is still relevant, though the critical damage nerfs have lowered his ability to carry in the late game. Another frontline trait that's been nerfed is Cavalier. Cavalier has received multiple nerfs, which lowered it from S tier down to A tier. That said, it is still one of the best frontline options in the mid to late game, partially because of Rel, but also due to the armory changes. Since finding emblems and spatulas is a lot more common, having 3 or 4 Cavalier is not that difficult to hit, which increases the value of the trait. Next up, we have Ranger and Eternal. Ranger is a middle-of-the-pack composition that can top 4 relatively often thanks to Aphelios. Varus has fallen out of favor, and Ash, while viable, is far less consistent than Aphelios. Most of the time, the trait is carried by Aphelios and Kindred, which is why Eternal is paired with it. The main selling point of Rangers is that it's another AD option in the meta when you're unable to find Draven. Brawler is the oddity of A tier because it's not that useful later on in the game and mainly does well early game. So it's here due to how strong it is in the early game, especially if you have Nunu. But the issue is scaling into the late game, which isn't as common with Abomination being less prevalent and Set no longer being a viable carry anymore. 
Dragon Slayer is being hard carried by Mordekaiser, Diana, and Yasuo. Because it boosts the damage of Yasuo by so much, it's common to see four Dragon Slayer, four Legionnaire, or Nightbringer boards. Overall, it's a bit situational of a trade, but the value it brings to the specific meta compositions makes it worth using. Next, we have Caretaker, meaning Heimerdinger. If you can get into the late game and find Heimerdinger at level 8, then you'll be in a solid position. Heimer is often paired with Ivern and Volibear, which makes this a common late game trio that you can flex your board around. That said, Heimer can be a bit unreliable due to his high mana pool, so make sure you have items for him in the late game. Cruel is similar to Heimerdinger in that you're mainly going to see Teemo as a late game carry or sometimes to help hit for Invoker. But Cruel costs health, so only players in a strong position can really make use of the trait. Still, Teemo packs a punch, and the attack speed slow from his ability will win you a lot of fights against auto attack comps. Let's now move into the B tier. This tier consists of Hellion, Assassin, Abomination, Spellweaver, Ironclad, Knight, Renewer, Coven, and Redeemed. These synergies are all solid options in the meta, but are more situational than the previous tiers. First up is Hellions, which are still one of the best early game traits. But that's if you can hit a Ziggs 2 and have items for him. Due to the cannon nerfs, it's difficult to make Hellions carry you all the way to level 8, so it's only worth running them if you have a really good early game. Assassins are doing well in the mid game, particularly if you manage to hit a Katarina 2 or a Nocturne 2. With either of those two champions, you can make your way into the top 4, though to go any further, you need to 3 star them. Instead of using them as a main composition, try to pivot out of the mid game Assassins into builds like Forgotten or an AD composition that uses Nocturne as an initial item holder. Late game, there is value from champions like Diana and Viego, but for the most part, stick to using the trait as a way to gain an advantage in the mid game. Abomination is in a weird position because it can be really strong in the mid game, but it can also bomb out really easily. A lot of it has to do with luck as you need Nunu 2 and a solid backline to make the synergy do well. And if you want to play it late game, you need an Abomination emblem, so you'll be at the whim of Lady Luck again as to whether or not you can find one. Spellweaver mostly pairs with Abomination, though Velkaz can be used in other comps as well. For the most part, this trait isn't all that useful outside of specific situations. The Cavalier Spellweaver composition is still viable, but keep in mind it received a few nerfs, making it less consistent than before. Ironclad is a splash trait that can be useful, but it highly depends on the lobby. If there's more AP compositions in the lobby than AD, Ironclad is not going to bring much value. Luckily for Ironclad, Rel is a top tier champion, which means splashing this trait is always a possibility. Knights rely heavily on Kale to be relevant in the meta. Early game they can be alright, but both Cavalier and Brawler are better. That said, Taric and Darius have risen a lot in value, especially for Ranger compositions, so there's still some value in running Knights outside of Kale boards as well. Renewer is in an interesting position because the trait is actually more viable now after the armory changes. This is because finding Renewer Emblem makes hitting 4 Renewer possible, and 4 Renewer is quite useful for champions like Ivern and Heimerdinger. Plus, there's a few reroll compositions using Renewer, such as Vladimir and Soraka. But the issue is 2 Renewer isn't all that useful, even if it's commonly used. Outside of specific situations with an emblem, for the most part, this trait is only going to do anything early game with Vladimir or with Sandra being used as an item holder. Coven almost feels like a 4 fun synergy in the current meta. This is because it's mainly used for reroll builds for Vladimir, Soraka, or Warwick, and none of these builds really do that well in the late game. With the Lock being nerfed into the ground and Katarina being used more for Forgotten than Assassin, there's just not much use for Coven outside of those niche shot positions. And the last trait for the B tier is Redeemed. Redeemed has been, well, redeemed thanks to the armory changes. Being able to hit 6 Redeemed with an emblem has increased the value of this trait since you can flex into better champions for your board. The problem with Redeemed is the only real carry is Vel'Koz as Varus was nerfed and Kale prefers to have harder to kill frontlines. The trait can be used early on in the game where Varus can be used as an item holder either for AD champions later on or in an attempt to play Kale. Overall though, if you want to play Redeemed, we recommend trying to stick with Vel'Koz if you manage to get a Redeemed Emblem. Alright, let's move on to our last tier for today, the C tier. This tier consists of Skirmisher, Draconic, God King, and Verdant. The bottom of the tier list has two synergies that are situationally viable, while the other two eh, don't really do anything. Skirmishers have fallen out of grace this patch and are mostly relegated to being used in niche situations where someone happens to high roll in early jacks. Rerolling for Skirmishers was also an option, but that too has gone to the wayside in favor of stronger comps. But it's not all doom and gloom, Skirmishers early game can still do well if you hit an Italy 2 and can use her as an item holder. 
A fast jack to an either stage three or early stage four can help you get a top four. Unfortunately, those situations aren't common, so for the most part, you can skip using this trait in most of your games. Next up is Draconic, which flips back and forth all the time from being borderline overpowered to basically useless. With set being heavily nerfed, the best way to utilize Draconic is with Ash as the carry, but you do need to high roll. This means you have to hit Draconic no later than 2-3 and get early eggs that drop Ash. If that rather specific scenario occurs, great! Draconic is playable, but Draconic boards are on average not strong enough to warrant playing the tray outside of those high roll situations. That said, if you do hit it early, it's still worth pursuing through stage two just to see how the dice roll. Now for the two traits that essentially do nothing, beginning with God King. Let's preface this by saying both Garen and Darius are great champions in the current meta. Both are viable and necessary for a lot of endgame comps. So why is God King so low on the list? Because it doesn't do anything. 20% damage increase against a few specific traits is completely ignorable. Until the trait gets a bit of love, we're likely to keep tossing it down at the bottom of the tier list. And as usual, we have Verdant in dead last because like God King, it's basically useless. There are some situations where you have Verdant as a trait, but it's unlikely to ever do anything. The only time the trait becomes relevant is with three Verdant, which almost never happens. Like God King, the champions aren't bad and have use in the meta, but they really need to go back to the drawing board on Verdant. That's gonna be it for today's tier list video. On all the meta is in a stable place with a lot of viable options. Due to the armory changes, there's a lot more flexible late game with vertical chase traits, so almost everything is playable in the right situation. Let us know in the comment section below what you think of the current meta and what changes you'd like to see in the next patch. Thank you for watching, and if you're enjoying our content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Future Giant Slayer, TFT Videos.